In this video, we're going to talk about benchmarking. And for all kinds of things, there's benchmarks. For cars, it's you know how fast you do zero to 60, which you do in the quarter mile. For hang gliders, it's glide ratio. For internet, it's your upload and download speeds. But what benchmarks can you use for a, for a camera, right? So we use a number of them here in the lab at Sub2R. And the first one is an MTF chart. Consider that kind of an eye chart for cameras. It's originally designed to measure the distortion of a lens, but when we use it, it combines the distortion of the lens, the image sensor, the algorithms inside the camera, and what processes it on the backside, be it broadcasting or recording. So it's an overall gauge of, of how well you preserve the quality of the image. The other thing we use is a color card, pretty standard color card. The issue that you get with a color card is, is your monitor calibrated? And then the difficult part is the fact that everybody sees color slightly differently. So it's good to have a color card with you when you're setting up your camera. You look at the color card, match it to your monitor, make sure you can, you can dial those in as closely as possible. But the important thing today is we're going to talk about frame rate. And we did a video a while back where I was waving at the camera, and that caused quite some controversy. We're showing what uh, 60 frames a second will do as far as motion capture goes. And I was trying to think of a way, what's, what's a better way to benchmark motion capture like that? And what we try to do is identify the fact that we've got locked frame rate with unique frames per second, meaning that every frame that we capture is a unique frame and every frame we transfer, transmit is a unique frame and we do that at whatever frame rate we broadcast that we're going to do it at, be it 30 or 60 frames a second. So I'm a bit of a gearhead, and I managed to find a standard electric millisecond clock on eBay. They're very inexpensive. You can get them. And they, they run at one revolution every half second, so two FPS, and or RPS, I should say. Every one of those little lines is a millisecond, a thousandth of a second. And so you can film the clock face play it back in slow motion, and you're able to count the actual unique frames and be able to measure them clearly. So it's a great tool for benchmarking um, how your, your unique frames per second that you're capturing and transmitting. In the first set, what we've done is we were managed to open the windows at our lab here in San Francisco, which is very rare, get some direct sunlight in, and the left image will always be dialed in for image quality. The right image is always dialed in for motion capture, least amount of blur in, in each frame of exposure. And what you'll notice is when you have 1800 lux, which is what we, we measure with a standard light meter, that in direct sunlight, both images are pretty much the same. I mean, you've got all the light you need. In the next set of tests that we did, we dropped it down to uh, 500 lux, which is two softbox lights that are lit up and facing the, the clock face. And with this, again, the left hand we dialed in for image quality and the right hand we dialed in for uh, motion capture. And you can see very clear frame by frame in the right hand side and just a slight noticeable blur in the left hand side, but we preserved image quality. In the third set we did, we drop the lighting even further to show we can still capture locked unique frames at, at 60 frames a second. And this is at 100 lux. So we've dropped the lights considerably. And we're still capturing a good, clean image uh, motion capture on the right-hand side. And we still have a pretty good um, image quality on the left-hand side. And the final test, we dropped it all the way down to 1800 lux, or excuse me, 18 lux. <laughs> and that's almost no light at all. And you can see we can still capture 60 frames a second, and we're still able to get a reasonable, decent image quality on the left-hand side. And that concludes our first, our first video on benchmarking.